Hi, this is Richard Hicks, founder and principal consultant of Richard M. Hicks Consulting. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to enable load balancing for direct access. Load balancing is essential for direct access to provide scalability and eliminate critical single points of failure. Enabling load balancing is fairly simple, but surprisingly there's a lot of confusion around some of the requirements, specifically around IPv4 address assignments and virtual IP addresses. So let's take a look at a diagram for our current configuration. I have two direct access servers. Node 1 has two network interfaces, one internal and one external. They're using private IPv4 addressing on both sides. So this is a perimeter DMZ NAT deployment. I have a second node that's installed and configured. It has the same configuration, two network interfaces, private IPv4 addresses on the internal and external interfaces. Now you'll notice in this diagram, my IPv4 addressing is not contiguous. This is by design and you'll actually see why that is in just a minute. So let's jump over to our direct access server and we will enable load balancing. It's in the tasks pane here under load balance cluster and we'll just simply click on enable load balancing. If you're going to use network load balancing, or NLB, you must first install the NLB role on each server in the cluster. That's easy enough. It's done using PowerShell, using the install Windows feature command. And the feature here is NLB. And you can include the management tools if you like. So once that's done, we'll click Next. We'll select external load balancer for the purposes of this demonstration. Functionally speaking, there are no differences with regards to IP addressing and IP address assignments with internal and external load balancing. So I'm going to choose external for this particular demonstration. So we'll choose next. And here is where the confusion comes in. The first thing that the wizard asks you for is for a new external dedicated IP address. Dedicated IP addresses are nothing more than the IP addresses that are assigned to the network interface or the network adapter. It's going to ask you to change them because it's going to take the existing IP address on this first node and make it the virtual IP address. So we're going to enter a new IP address here. This is the external interface. And then we'll click Next, and we'll enter a new dedicated IP address for the internal network interface. Click Next again, and review the configuration, and you'll see here that the external dedicated IP address is now 241, and the 240, which was originally signed to the server, is now going to become the virtual IP address. So we'll click Commit. And now we'll review any warnings that came up during the application. It's basically going to tell you that you can't use ISOTAP when you enable load balancing. ISOTAP is not supported when using load balancing, whether or not you're using network load balancing or an external load balancer. Although it does work when you're using NLB, it is not supported, and it does not work without additional configuration if you're setting up an external load balancer. So we'll choose Close. And let's go back and review what it is that we just accomplished there. So what we've done is we've taken the original dedicated IP address assigned to this node before we enabled load balancing and moved that to become the virtual IP address and assigned a new dedicated IP address to the network adapter on this node. Now you'll notice that these line up. So 241 and 242 are now contiguous. So again, that's by design. I like things neat and tidy, so I like to have them in order. So the VIP will be 240. The dedicated of the first node is 241 and 242 on the second node and so on. Same thing for the external interface. So the original dedicated IP address becomes the virtual IP address and then I've signed a new dedicated IP address on the server. At this point, no other changes are required on any other servers. I can simply add nodes to the cluster. I don't have to do this uh, IP address assignment dance anymore. So I can add nodes easily. Now, a lot of confusion is centered around what do I do with these virtual IP addresses? Well, they're important to you for a couple of reasons. So first of all, with NLB or network load balancing, these are the virtual IP addresses that are going to be used for communication. So inbound communication to the cluster will come on the external VIP, so the 192.168.1.240 in this diagram. And if you're hosting the web probe host URL on the direct access servers, then the 172.16.1.240 in this diagram will be used for that. If you are using an external load balancer, this is where, again, there's some confusion. 
the only two addresses that you're really concerned about in this diagram are the dedicated IP addresses of the external network interfaces. These are going to be the IP addresses that are going to be used for your real servers or your pool members or your services, whatever your load balancer's vernacular is. These are the real servers, the real IP addresses that you're going to load balance. The virtual IP address can be on this subnet, but it doesn't have to be. It can be on any subnet. It can be uh, on a remote subnet in a different perimeter of DMZ network. It could be edge facing, so they could be public IP addresses assigned to the virtual IP address with these two addresses as the pool members. Now, with regards to external load balancers, the only thing you have to really concern yourself with is what happens with the web probe host URL. So when you enable direct access and configure it the first time, the remote access setup wizard will configure the direct access web probe host URL and put that into DNS, create an A host record, and give it an IP address. This IP address that is assigned to this record is the internal IPv4 address of the first direct access server. Since we've enabled load balancing, this direct access web probe host URL does not get updated, or host record does not get updated in DNS. It will still be this address. So for network load balancing, or NLB, no problem. The 172.16.1.240 is still a valid IP address on my network, and it would load balance that traffic to these nodes. When you use external load balancing, of course, you need to do some additional configuration. Because in this state, since this address no longer exists, what's going to happen is your Windows 8 and Windows 10 clients are going to show in the UI, the network connectivity status indicator is going to show that they are perpetually in a state of connecting. So one of two things you can do to address that. Uh, the first is to update the web probe host. And so if you go into the direct access management console, click edit under step one, you can click network connectivity assistant and you can configure another URL for this resource. Make sure that it's an internal URL using HTTP and that it's something that's highly available. You can, as a matter of fact, host this on the load balancer itself. Most load balancers can be configured to do that as well. So that's something you can do. Or you can simply create a new virtual IP address using that, that IP address, the original IP address, and then have it load balance TCP port 80 to each of the direct access servers. So that's it. If you have any more questions, feel free to visit the website, directaccess.richardhicks.com.